Yay, someone talk to me. Oh, yeah. And I have to take a picture of my truck. Let's see, I'm like, I don't care. Oh, uh, let's see here. Let's talk about some pro wrestling, folks. Today was Tuesday Night SmackDown, and it was it was a fairly entertaining show. Um, let's see here. That was actually I like that because that's a cheeseburger. Yeah, it's a setup for a lot, a lot of recaps, a lot of leading into stomping grounds this this Sunday, which I shall be doing a live stream RRR show for. Yes, reaction. Recapped and reviews. I remember those three R's for a change. That's impressive. Um, but before I start off, I was on my little Discord group for watching SmackDown over where I watched SmackDown. If you want to know where I watch SmackDown for free, just email me. The email will be on later. But let's see here. Michael Black 18. Because I just made this, this Jordan's got back. Goes out to you. Oh my god. Becky, look at her butt. Wow. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Kitka, you are part of the El Generico band. Joel TJ, you're that luchador on a forklift. And Smack Z O. I don't know if it's O or Zero. You're my tag team partner. I'd like to thank all those people. I think we were talking about clowns. And very quickly, um, I think there's like three clowns. I think there's, I think I actually mentioned that there's, by my count, I think there's five clowns in AAA. Did that count as a faction in AAA? It could. I know there's killer clown, psycho clown, murder clown. There's some midget clown. And they mentioned someone else. Oh! And then I brought the King of Clowns! Doink! 
That's six clowns we mentioned that actually wrestled. That's impressive. Again, wrestling fans are always fun to talk to. They talk about weird stuff. About a lot of wrestling. Oh, wait a second. That's on the second thing. That's on the second part. There we go. Now I know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe? Oh, I better not say that. I'll get copyright struck again. But this is actually a kind of fun SmackDown. It kind of started off weird. This SmackDown started off here. Eventually climbed its way. It petered off a little bit. Not as good as the Raw was. But it's not bad, though. It starts off with a New Day. New Day comes out. Again, working the, the promo. And Big E talking about Freaky Hour. Big E, you better be careful. The USA Network might not, might not like Freaky Hour. But then, of course, Dolph comes out, and then everyone will do the... Actually, no, I didn't do that. I was playing um, Candy Crush. Like, Dolph's on Candy Crush time. Either Candy Crush or, du or Dungeon Brawlers. If you guys want to see me play Dungeon Brawlers or Candy Crush, just stay tuned for this Sunday. If those matches get really bad, I have been known to head on over to my Facebook, my personal Facebook page, and just play Candy Crush and, fa and or Dungeon Brawlers because this pay-per-view, with the exception of a few matches, it's going to be, yep, exactly that. Probably a snooze thing. Probably a snooze thing. In fact, on Thursday, probably Thursday late morning, mid-afternoon, I'll be doing my predictions on, um, oh, Stomping Grounds, that's right. Even I forgot the So this whole thing led to a match between Xavier Woods and Dolph Ziggler. Actually, it was pretty good. Um... I like the fact that they use a lot of collegiate wrestlers. I think both wrestled in college. So it's really good that they're telling the story. It's like, hey, these two actually know how to wrestle. I, I do like that. And, and I do appreciate that. And that's right. I have to start my laundry before I go to the gym, too. Yeah. I'll dry it up when I get home. So, so that works out. Um, I think my only real thing... Can Dolph talk to Woods about spots or whatever it is they're talking about any longer and any more obvious? It kind of takes away from that magical feel that WWE is supposed to have where it has where it's this sports feel versus like the very indie feel. Like it's always funny in an indie match whenever they just see all their spots. It's funny. Here in the WWE, the whole different audience doesn't really translate as well. Um, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn show up. They take out the rest of the New Day. Eventually, you out. You out. New Day, you want to give us gruff? You out. You out too. Referees kicked everyone by out, out, out of ringside. Makes sense. Oh, wait. They did something that made sense. Indeed. We'll get to that later. Um, then, for the most part, it was, it was a pretty good match. Woods, he did a gorilla press into a gut buster. That was good. And Dolph Ziggler eventually had a zigzag said, That's not enough. Draped poor, limp, lifeless limp Xavier Woods over the ropes, super kicked him. And Dolph Ziggler picked up the one, two, three. And won the match in a cheeseburger match. Nothing spectacular. Nothing wrong with it, though. I mean, again, Xavier Woods spot. And the collegiate wrestling really gave that the cheeseburger match. Cheeseburger rating. Then you have a recap of what's happened. And then we have a we have a broken Matt Hardy dating. Yeah, three's confirmed in the seven deities. 
and along with Marion Corbin. And the fact that the BT man, Shelton Benjamin, were talking about being the guest referee. And lo and behold, Matthew Hardy of the Broken Universe comes out. It says, Senior Benjamin, it is your turn. That was funny. That got a chuckle out of the crowd. So I'll also make that Senior Hobo. Indeed. Is who said that? Oh, no. Senior Hobo. Impressed. Well, I'll get to that later, though. That's fine. Then you have a moment of bliss. Bailey. Oh, you want to do this? It's like, they're just like being bitchy to each other. Some of, it felt like a shoot interview. I did want to see poor, poor Nikki Cross had no idea what was going on. She was confused. Um, I wanted to see her take that face of flowers, go full on, turn to the bliss side, and just smash that face of flowers over Bailey's head. Because for the first time, I think in a long, not really a long time, and it was accidental. I think. Becky Lynch had her bro nose broken. I don't know. The, the women have been bleeding a little bit more. Um, like to wish all the get wells to Dana Brooks. She got really busted open by Sarah Logan. Crazy Mary Dobson came out to play. And. I hope she comes back to Daytona Beach or on um, the Amway Center July 21st for a house show. I'm going to see if I can make it, especially since the jobs I'm looking at don't have me working on Sundays. I get at least one guaranteed day off. Always nice to have. If they pay good, I can get rid of that boat fund, buy my boat, spend my Sundays fishing. Can't complain about that. And watching wrestling, just because you, the YouTube audience, demands it. Yes. Uh, then Apollo Crews was, like, looking for Andrade, but Selena Vega wearing one of those outfits. One of those, I'm having a Brazilian meltdown moment. And I thought for a moment something was going to slip out of that top, because that was a really tiny top. I don't think Aleister Black would like that. I don't think Aleister Black would like me. I am not going in any closed doors for a while. You want to fight me, Hobo Tom? Uh, who are you? Fight me! Okay. I'd be dead. One black mask, Hobo Tom dies. And then we have the B-Team versus Heavy Machinery B-Team. B team, B team, go, go, go. Then, yeah, heavy machinery comes out doing the bushwhacker. That's always cool. I do like it. We probably have a lot of comments with the bushwhackers considering that Bobby the Brain Heenan once called them New Zealand garbage men. Uh, that's funny. Um, a lot of isolation by the B team. They were smart. They isolated Tucker Knight. Good. Double teamwork by them. Um, the only thing is that you know the B team weren't going to win. Especially because Heavy Machine. Oh, shoot. Daniel Bryan is an amazing heel, and he's probably. And whenever he's done with his in ring wrestling, he could probably be one of the best heel commentators next to. Wait for it. Jesse the Body Ventura. He has that same persona, that same in-ring experience, that same heel attitude, just like Jesse the Body Ventura did, and he seems to be a natural for it. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, I also do want to see Bo Dallas in, in the Firefly Fun House. That'd just be fun. Then there was a double compactor. And the way it works now is that Otis Dozovich power slams him. And then somehow rolls off quick enough, and Tucker Knight gives him the, the big splash, the jumping splash on top, and it's like, ooh, that looks good. Um, Heavy Machinery did win. I like that. Kind of predictable. You know what? Only because it's predictable, and Heavy Machinery won going into a pay-per-view, means they're going to lose. 
I shall give this a ham sandwich. And that was fun. Then we had um Seth beating up Seth Rance in the ring beat the B team up with chairs only because they wanted wanted to be special guest referees. I'm trying to use my notes like a teleprompter so I can actually look at my camera and read notes of a lot more into it, except for when you get at the bottom of the page. Uh, then Shane shows up. Eh. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, this happened, I think, 9 o'clock my time, because I looked at my clock. I'm like, why is it sunny over there? Is this pre-taped? I'm like, oh, wait. It's 6 o'clock over there, so it would be sunny still. So Shane shows up. Then there's another Alistair Black promo. They're getting kind of old. He has to be on TV. Uh, then The Miz. Then you have Shane. If Shane, Drew, Elias, um, The Miz shows up. <laughs> the Miz needs to be a part of the Hobo Studios, folks. Mainly because of the video package he put together showing the slow-mo shots of Shane. Hobo Tom needs to be awesome. Ooh. Figure that out. Then I guess I was the referee. Um, so he had 10 seconds to find a new tag team, par to find a tag team partner. Lo and behold, R-Truth was hiding underneath the ring. R-Truth! R-Truth is my tag team partner. R-Truth is like, huh? R-Truth should enjoy wrestling in non-24-7 tag team matches because he doesn't have to worry about getting jumped, which is good. So this set up a match, and then it kind of cuts the back. So I guess they had to get the referee down. They had to get the ring apron on right. So then there was the Iconic! And they just like were actually it was first authors of pain came out. I don't know, they were just talking. I guess um I think Resort's all healed up, I guess. They're like, impressive! Very impressive. You're a married woman, Peyton Royce. And Billy Kay, you could be the next girlfriend for this guy. Although it's one, two. No, I won't think semi dirty thoughts like that. Shame on me. Um, but then the match starts as uh, Miz and R Truth versus Drew McIntyre and Elias. This was a fun match. Elias. <laughs> The rib tape's terrible. The only person who wore the rib tape best was Diamond Dallas Page. So at least his whole midsection was taped up, not just like a couple sections. And when you do something to your ribs, the rib tape does like absolutely nothing. So it's one of those things they just kind of set in place. If they really do feel a need, they'll put a screw in there. But I mean, other than that, they're just like, dude, you're stuck. You have to deal with the pain. Nothing you can do about that. Like that when you break a tailbone. Or the worst feeling is, is when you stub your little, little toe. Ouch. I did that against my Kessler box. I went like a whole year without stubbing my freaking toe. It finally healed up. I nailed it against my cat's litter box in the bathroom. Uh, but this match was actually really fun, though. Um, it was good stuff from our truth He still has it. Until Drew McIntyre gets in the ring, though. And then it's all bets are off. Um, Elias eventually has a heel attack outside the ring. So does Shane. <laughs> Drew actually throws Elias into the ring. Of course, Shane gets involved. Our truth gets eliminated. This is an elimination match. And then, of course, once he gets eliminated, the whole loser locker room comes out. Sean Benjamin just takes his title and runs around the ring. He's like, that's not how you work. You have to actually pin him for it. So he's like, what? So the ref took the belt back, and then all of a sudden they're, 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 they all start brawling. And then R Truth takes his belt and runs. And we'll get to that later because, again, there was some good stuff going on today or tonight for Raw. Um, so that just leaves poor Miz alone in the ring versus Drew. Oh, and that a headbutt. Screw Scottish headbutt. Bodger Samoan headbutt. That's a Shibata headbutt. Ooh, that did not come loopy. Um, 
Again, he gets the yes kicks and ooh, that headbutt. So Miz gets destroyed by Elias. I think he eats two or three Claymores. Well, one Claymore then gets pinned and then eats two more, I think. At, of course, Shane's behest. But, ooh, but that headbutt looked. This was another good cheeseburger match. And I can't wait for Sunday to be over because Monday they're still going to stay a lot. And I think everyone else has also complained about this that does this. It's like, can they really mention they're here to kick ass and take names at stomping ground enough? Whoa, it just gets old when they say it before every match and every recap. And every announcement is old. You can say it once or twice to, to remind us. Say it once at the beginning, once at the end, maybe once in the middle, three times at most. Let's just snow in our head. Not every segment, though. We get it. Uh, then there was an Ember Moon segment. She chases down Mandy Rose and, and Boo Sonya Deville while they're eating mm, donuts. Uh, Ember Moon just stacked Mandy Rose and then just starts to brawl with Boo Sonya Deville. Eventually, this is going to probably lead to. And Carmella's is there. She's looking for R Truth. Um, eventually, there's going to be a tag match. Probably next week Ember Moon and Carmella versus Fire and Desire and Mandy Rose. And that moment was the fact that Drake Maverick dressed up like Carmella. I honestly thought from a distance it actually looked like Carmella because you saw the blonde, blonde hair. The boobies, the the mid shirt, and I guess shaved leg. And you're like, oh, there's Carmella. So then Archie is like, Carmella, Carmella. I'm like, dude, she's right there in like in front of you, waiting by the truck. I was wrong. I like being wrong like that though, because that was something different. Uh, the referee pulled up in a car. Came out and, and our truth is confused. It's like, and looks around. It's like, what are you doing here, Mister Referee? This is my car. It's like, no, it's my car. I was told to be here. It's like, me, Carmelo. It was Drake Maverick in disguise. Drake Maverick not only rolled up our truth, but did a dirty pin off the ref's car to become the new twenty four seven champion. Bravo. Bravo, well played, my good man. Um, so, and then he just drove off. He says, I'm going to get married. I have a wedding to go to. I have my wedding to go to. So that was pretty cool. So he goes in as champion. If he's smart and savvy, he'll wear that 24-7 belt as part of his suit. That would be funny as anything. Yeah, because this was a match, it was fun and creative. It's a ham sandwich. Then last but not least, we have our main event. We have in a two or three falls match. I don't like the repetition aspect of this. It was Kofi Kingston and Seth Rollins versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Tag match. The bell literally rings. Kofi nails poor Sami Zayn in the head with a trouble in paradise. I guess the one, two, three for their number one win. And that took all of, I think, like 10 seconds. And then, geez, they, they, still, they only have eight minutes left. It upset me they only gave the match like 15 minutes. And I think, again, with entrances and everything, there was like eight minutes left after the first minute. It's like, they're giving us just eight more minutes? But actually, it was a good match. And actually, I like it when they do the old school double axe handle. Blow onto the opponent's elbow for the double team move. That's good. And that happened twice by the faces. Um, I know Seth had to get his hair taken away. So that was fun. Um, Kofi is booked really strong. Um, Kofi probably be retaining. Seth is definitely retaining, although there's always a possibility of a cash in by Brock Lesnar. They might be saving that, though. 
uh, later when the fox when, when they fox when they fox picks them up on TV though. So we'll see. Um, Ko gets nailed by the curb stomp. He eats the second pin. Hey, at least Sami Zayn didn't eat both pins. And again, this was another fun cheeseburger match. And that was SmackDown. A rather fun, entertaining match. Uh, again, some news and notes about stuff. Um, in two days, I go get my tickets because I still think there's like 140 tickets left. Plenty. They're not going to sell out in two days. I think they've opened up new parts of the arena, so that's always good. And you never know, I think, with that place, how many tickets go to disinterested people. Because I know they are having the video game convention that Saturday as well. So you never know if there's some like weird package deal. It's like, yeah, you get this seat for an extra 10 bucks. They say, oh, wrestling match. Half the people show up. So they're not true wrestling fans. And then Sunday, the 23rd, well, for sure, um, Thursday is going to have my prediction videos. Ooh, I have to write that down. Videos. Video. Predict. Predict. Video. Friday is going to be my Impact Wrestling. Live, kind of live stream r r and r show. Then the 23rd is going to be the r r and r show. Review, react, and recap of Stomping Grounds. Monday Night Raw, Tuesday SmackDown. The 29th, AEW comes to town. And then after that, we get into July. July, let's see here. For some reason, I have July 7th marked down for something. Oh, July, um, July 7th? Wait, before I get to that, again, so July 1st is going to be Raw. July 2nd, the 2 SmackDown. The 4th of July is going to be my rr and show. Uh, the... Ooh, then Friday. I have a lot of wrestling to watch. Friday's going to be the TNA Go Home Show. The 7th is going to be Slammiversary. Uh, Raw... SmackDown. Oh, then that's it. I know the 21st is a house show. I think the 28th is Backlash. So again, a little. I have my match cards set for the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. So there's going to be the one, two, three, four, five, six matches. That's actually pretty good. And I should thank everyone for watching. Um, again, if you like your name, shout out, you can always say hi to Hobo Tom in the Discord group over at Woohoo. Um, that you can also email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. You can send a chat message. You can chat, uh, subscribe, like, share, comment. That's the one I was looking for, comment. So everyone have a good night, and I'll see everyone.